Hello, my name is Steve Huff and I'm the president of Accuracy X. And you guys are used to watching me do one of these videos, introduce myself, and then show you one of our cool rifles or pistols and how accurate and how well our products perform. But today this video has a completely different purpose. For those of you that have been paying attention, and more importantly, for those of you that are not aware, Virginia is in a fight for its life for its Second Amendment freedoms and rights. The first thing I'd like to ask each of you watching this video is please watch the entire video. And then I'd ask you to please, I would beg you to share it with everyone you know. I have never in my life felt compelled to reach out and make a statement like this before. And I am truly concerned about what's happening in my state. I believe that Republicans and Democrats alike love their families and want to protect their families. I refuse to believe that this is a right and left debate. I refuse to believe that this is a Democrat and Republican issue on one side or the other. These newly proposed anti-Second Amendment and anti-gun laws that are being pushed through in Virginia will do nothing to keep our community safer. Everyone knows that. The FBI's own statistics back that up. So why are they doing this? Because it isn't about community safety with these folks. It's about the fact that they don't like that the Second Amendment exists at all. Obviously, everyone hates to see when there's violence in our communities. And we all want to find solutions that help improve that situation. But we know that this legislation is not intended to address that. I no longer believe their story that this is just about public safety. If it was, the laws they're proposing would be different. But in fact, what they're doing is they're proposing the widest, most far-reaching, egregious laws they can to affect the widest amount of firearms as possible. If these laws go into effect instantly, with the stroke of a pen, millions of what are now law-abiding citizens in Virginia, these are people who get up every day, work hard, pay their taxes, raise their families, follow the laws, be good citizens for the state of the Old Dominion, will be made criminals instantly once these laws pass. This is outrageous and is unacceptable. We cannot stand by and let the, the elite powers of our government who have been chomping at the bit for this opportunity to force feed us their worldview that is completely contrary to what we believe, what we hold dear, and what our forefathers fought and died for. The Constitution exists for a reason. Our laws largely exist, and the Bill of Rights exists, to control and limit government's encroachment upon the citizens' lives, not the other way around. And these laws clearly violate citizens' rights to keep and bear arms, to protect themselves because it's an inalienable right. This is a far scary overreach. This is no longer about agreeing to find a middle ground. If it was only about the AR-15, the laws they are proposing would not be written the way they are. So guys, let's look at the verbiage of some of these bills that are being proposed. So this is bill, Senate Bill number 16, proposed by Dick Saslow. So this bill describes an assault rifle, actually an assault firearm, by these terms. And there's many of these. A semi-automatic centerfire rifle expels a single or multiple projectiles by action of an explosion of a combustible material with a fixed magazine capacity in excess of 10 rounds. Or a semi-automatic centerfire rifle that expels single or multiple projectiles by action of ex an explosion of a combustible material that has the ability to accept a detachable magazine and has one of the following characteristics. One of the following characteristics. A folding or telescoping stock. A pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the rifle. A thumb hole stock. A second hand grip. A protruding grip that can be held by the non-trigger hand. A bayonet mount. A grenade launcher. A flare launcher. A silencer. A flash suppressor a muzzle brake, a muzzle compensator. Folks, that just described the vast majority of firearms in the state of Virginia, and they know this. In addition, Senate Bill 16 says a semi-automatic centerfire pistol that expels single or multiple projectiles by action of an explosion or a combustional material that has had the ability to accept a detachable magazine and has one of the following characteristics, a folding or telescoping stock, a thumbhole stock, a second hand grip or a protruding grip that can be held by the non-trigger hand. And this is a big one. The capacity to accept a magazine attaches to the pistol outside of the pistol grip. A shroud that is attached to or partially or completely encircles the barrel that permits the shooter to hold the pistol with the non-trigger hand without being burned. A manufactured weight of 50 ounces or more when the pistol is unloaded. A threaded barrel capable of accepting a silencer, a flash suppressor, a barrel extender, a forward hand grip, 
And here's the kicker. And all of these end with this. Or any characteristic of like kind as enumerated in clauses one through seven. Basically, that is so vague that they can make it mean anything they want. And those descriptions would basically make every sporting pistol and every semi-automatic pistol in the state of Virginia almost immediately illegal under this new legislation. It is unbelievably aggressive and unconstitutional what they are proposing. As I said, this shows us what they really, really mean. We've heard lots of these delegates and these senators go, hey, wait a minute, these aren't finished bills. They haven't gone through committee. They haven't been edited. Folks, you wrote the bills. They shouldn't need to be edited. This is, in your own words, your dream world, a world where almost no firearms are allowed and almost no Second Amendment freedoms are allowed to the citizens of Virginia. So let's talk about Clause 7. The capacity to accept a magazine that attaches to the pistol outside of the pistol grip. The capacity to to accept a magazine, not the magazine. And what that is saying is if you own a semi-automatic pistol that uses a detachable magazine and it has the capability of receiving a magazine that holds more than 10 rounds, then you are not allowed to own that firearm. It is illegal under this new proposal. Not that you don't have a magazine that holds more than 10 rounds. They've written it so vague that even though the pistol and you only have a 10 round magazine, the fact that somewhere somebody could have a magazine that would hold more than 10 rounds and it would be attached and it would be outside of the pistol grip basically means that that pistol is illegal, as would any rifles or shotguns. That's their intent. These are smart people. They know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing and they see their opportunity as right now. And we as Virginians have to stand up and we have to defend our rights as we've never done before. Furthermore, let's talk about what their definition of a shotgun that would be outlawed would be. A semi-automatic shotgun that expels single or multiple projectiles by action of an explosion of a combustion material that has one of the following characteristics. A folding or telescoping stock, a thumb hole stock, a pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the shotgun, the ability to accept a detachable magazines, and again, of course, the fixed magazine capacity of seven rounds, and at the end, as in all of these, any characteristic of like kind as enumerated in clauses one through five. Guys, this isn't about gun safety. This isn't about making our community safer. This isn't about public safety. To be honest with you, these politicians have lied to us and lied to us, and we're on to them now. This is not what they say it is. It is absolutely about making our Second Amendment rights so thin and so narrow they almost don't exist in the state of Virginia. Let's talk about Senate Bill number 64, and this was submitted by uh, Senator Lucy Lucas. This bill goes beyond firearms. It goes to the matter of intent. It says, number one, teaches or demonstrates to any other person the use of or the application or making of any firearm, explosive, or incendiary device or technique capable of causing injury or death to persons knowing or having reason to know or intending that such training will be employed for the use or in the furtherance of civil disorder. So now the government is going to figure out what people intend and tell them what they can and cannot do? This is reckless language. And this would basically outlaw anyone from technically being able to take their daughter or their son and teach them how to go hunting because they could interpret it, they being the government, that ultimately there might be an intent that that, those skills could be used for further civil disorder. It's outrageous what they are proposing. So Governor Northam says this, if we have constitutional laws on the books and law enforcement officers are not enforcing those laws on the books, then there are going to be some consequences. And that's why they've submitted or updated House Bill 67. Let's talk about House Bill number 67, submitted by Delegate Lee Carter. In this, they're already anticipating the fact that they are going to have to enforce these laws if they get them passed. That means they're going to have to charge employees of the state, law enforcement employees of the state, to go out and enforce these anti-Second Amendment unconstitutional laws upon the citizens of the state of Virginia by force. I know a lot of law enforcement guys. I train a lot of law enforcement guys. And I can tell you that they're not happy about this. They are just as upset about this as you and I as private citizens are in the state of Virginia. 
But let me tell you what Senate Bill, or excuse me, House Bill number 67 says. It's basically saying that public safety employees striking terminates and becomes temporarily ineligible for public employment. Essentially what they're saying is any agency or government official who strikes or willfully refuses to perform the duties of his employment by such action be deemed to be terminated from his employment and shall thereafter be ineligible for employment in any position of any capacity. And it gives a time frame. So what they're basically telling all of those law enforcement officials is, hey guys, if you want to keep your jobs, if you want to keep your pensions, if you want to keep your health care, we're going to force you to exercise and enforce unconstitutional laws in the state of Virginia. Outrageous. Patently outrageous. After hearing and reading the contents of these proposed bills, it should be very obvious to you that none of this is about increasing gun safety or making our communities safer. It has one agenda, to disarm the citizens of Virginia and to rapidly curtail the freedoms within the Second Amendment that we are guaranteed. And we cannot stand by and let this happen. Almost every rifle, pistol, and shotgun in the state of Virginia would immediately become illegal to own or possess. The laws are so crazy and so stringent that they even specify components of these rifles and pistols and shotguns could be considered and would be considered contraband. So if you just had a plastic pistol grip and nothing else that could be attached to something, that would make you a felon. It's crazy to believe that we've come to this. Our governor, Ralph Northam. Yes, that Ralph Northam. He tells us that this is about public safety. This is about keeping our communities safe. Well, sir, I respectfully disagree. When I read the bills that you and your cohorts have submitted, they are patently unconstitutional. The Heller decision is clear on this. The argument that we are only protected for firearms that existed in the 18th century is ridiculous at best. Then are we not also protected under the First Amendment for new media like social media and email? The only time your privacy is protected is if you write a letter with a quill pen? I do not believe so. And the Supreme Court has decided on this. You guys know that you're passing unconstitutional laws or you're trying to. And you've woken us up. We understand politics. We understand different points of view. But we also understand the inalienable rights that every American is born with and every American citizen is granted when they become a citizen. And sir, you are attacking those rights. And the fact that over 90 municipalities and county and locations in Virginia, to the date of me filming this video, have declared or will declare that they are a Second Amendment sanctuary location tells you all you need to know. Guys, there's only 95 counties in the entire state. Does that sound like this is the will of the people to you? And if you think that this is just Republican holdout, bastions of pockets of, of, of you know, right-wing, gun-toting, loving people, let me tell you, many of these counties have thousands and thousands of people show up for a board meeting, and they can't fit people into the locations. They won't even fit into high school gyms. They have so many people showing up. Do you think that that's only Republicans showing up? No. This is affecting all Virginians, no matter what your political preferences are. They know that these laws are unconstitutional. They know they will be appealed. They don't care. This is their opportunity to force something through and get it on the books. Then you get to the statements that certain legislators have made after the proposal of this. Here's a statement by Democratic Committee person Catherine Morrison. She says, to me, we are a nation of laws and not men and we all follow laws we don't particularly want to follow. Morrison said, that's the democratic process. The majority wins and then compromises with the minority and they make policy. She went on to say, the prospect of ignoring laws that the state legislature might pass is an outrage. Well, ma'am, I respectfully say the true outrage is for a small minority of people in charge trying to make unconstitutional laws law in the state of Virginia and expecting us to have to be forced to obey those unconstitutional laws. Representative Jerry Conley said this about law enforcement that have said that they would not want to enforce unconstitutional illegal laws upon their own citizens. He said, I would hope they would either resign in good conscience because they cannot uphold the law which they are sworn to uphold. Well, guess what, sir? The highest law in the land is the Constitution. And what you are trying to propose is contrary to everything that has been settled law on this. Let's talk about what Attorney General Mark Herring said, and I quote, 
So when Virginia passes these gun safety laws, that they will be followed, they will be enforced. Now, let's keep in mind, that is not vague language. What they're saying is if these laws are passed, it is their intent to force people in Virginia to oblige by these unconstitutional laws. Chilling. Virginia Representative Donald McEachin even suggested that the governor should and could and would use the Virginia National Guard upon its own citizens to enforce these laws. Now, guys, what do you think that means? Do you think the Virginia National Guard is going to be mobilized and they're going to come to your house and then give you a verbal reprimand if you choose not to obey these unconstitutional laws? Sir, this is the very reason the Second Amendment was included in our founding fathers' documents. The British tried to do the very same thing. And that is why we have the right to keep and to bear arms. Guys, you're not going to convince me that this is a right or left issue or that it's a Republican or Democrat issue. To me, it is a Virginian issue. I know that Democrats and Republicans alike like to hunt and they enjoy the shooting sports and competition shooting. This is not a issue that is based on political affiliation. This is not a us against them. It's Virginians against laws and legislation that are clearly unconstitutional and that we will not stand by for this. It's ironic that the state motto for Virginia that's across our state seal and emblazoned on our state flag is Six Semper Tyrannis, thus always to tyrants. We've forgotten why that motto was put on the state flag. Virginia was one of the original 13 colonies. They were originally ruled and governed by the British government from afar. And because of the overreaches of that government, the revolution of America was born and spawned and created the greatest nation on earth. How soon we forget that tyranny is not something that's in the past but can rear its ugly head at any time. We need to remember and we need to defend our rights today just as our forefathers did over 200 years ago to ensure that future generations will enjoy the same freedoms and the same privileges as we have in our lives. Folks, this is now or never. This is not something you can afford to sit on the sidelines and see what happens. This is our high water mark. This is the day that we will look back on, and this is the time we will look back on and say, that was where the tide turned, or that's where the end began. This is a blitzkrieg of legislation. They've been waiting for this opportunity for years. They have a narrow window, and they're going to do everything they can to maximize it. If you can, donate to some Second Amendment initiative that is trying to fight the fight for us. They need the funds to back and resist. We all know that millions of dollars have been funneled into the state to support these candidates and to promote this initiative. This is the fight we have to fight. If you stay quiet, we will lose. On January 20th, lobbying day in Richmond, I encourage everyone, no matter what you're doing, stop what you're doing, make plans, and show up and show your support for the Second Amendment rights of Virginia citizens. And this isn't just a Virginia issue. I think we all understand what's at stake here. If they're able to force this down on Virginia, the next states will follow and they will not stop. They've shown us who they finally are. We understand that this isn't about middle ground. This isn't about trying to find common sense solutions. This is about control. There's been talk about a grandfather clause now. They've already started to back pedal a little bit. Well, you know what? We're not interested in a grandfather clause. What would have happened if our forefathers had opted for a grandfather clause against the British government? There would have never been a United States of America. And the generations that have passed between then and now would have not known the freedoms that we are all fortunate enough to have. Guys, freedom is tough. Freedom is hard. We have it so good in this country and we've had it good for so long, we forgot that it has to be tended to. It has to be protected. It has to be nurtured. I'm asking you to do your part today. Donate where you can to help these initiatives for the Second Amendment organizations to get the word out. Tell your friends, call your friends, let everyone know. As I said, I do not believe this is a left or right issue. I believe everyone or the mass majority of people realize this is an overreach that cannot be accepted. And in addition to that, please do everything in your power to be at the Virginia State Capitol in Richmond on January 20th. We need you to be there. We need a public showing of support that is so massive and so overwhelming that these few that are in power right now that are trying to push this, let them understand they do not represent the will of the people. 
again, over 90 municipalities and locations have declared a resistance to this illegal action or potential illegal action by these state legislators. We must let them know that we will not stand for this. So what can you do to help us defend our Second Amendment rights in the state of Virginia? Well, first of all, you can't count on somebody else to do the fighting for you. You can't count on somebody else to go to Richmond for you. You can't count on somebody else to spread the word for you. You need to be able to stand up and take your place in the line. It's going to take all of us. Yes, we'd love to have you in Richmond on January 20th. That's lobbying day, and there's going to be probably tens if not hundreds of thousands of people that are going to show up and support what we're trying to fight against with these new legislative laws. But you can do little things like talk to your neighbors and friends, share things on Facebook. Again, share this video. Let people know what's going on. Most people don't understand how aggressive these new proposed laws are, but you can't rely on someone else to defend your Second Amendment rights. It is not the NRA's job to defend your Second Amendment rights. Yes, they do a good job. The Virginia Civil Defense League, all those guys work really hard and do a good job. But it's ultimately yours and my responsibility to defend and stand up for our own rights. I beg you and I beseech you, contact your elected officials. Don't just contact them once. Contact them five, six times a day. Tie up their email. Tie up their phones. Tie up their, their offices. Do everything in your power to be the noisy, loudest people you can to let them know that we don't stand for this. This is a Virginian issue, and everybody that is not just so far politically on one extreme or the other understands that these laws are such an overreach and have nothing to do with really solving the problems we're trying to address. It's an opportunity for them to gain control and to grab power at the expense of us, the citizens of the Old Dominion, and we cannot let this stand. Thank you again for watching this video and educating yourself about this very important subject. Share this information with your friends. Have conversations with your colleagues, people at work, your community, your family. This is what we must do. We must get this information out so that everyone knows what's trying to be done. I look forward to seeing you on January 20th, 2020 at Lobbying Day in Richmond, Virginia, so that we can stand together and protect freedom in the great Old Dominion.